Uh, so hi everyone. Today we'll try to understand how we can check whether a given time series is stationary or not, and if it is not stationary, how we can convert this uh, time series into a stationary one. So let's get started. So for checking for whether a time series is stationary or not, we can have two methods. One is to like we can plot the mean and standard deviation of a particular time series, as you can see here using uh, uh, matplotlib, and eventually see whether the mean and uh, standard deviation are constant or not. So here you can see that over a rolling window. So here you can see that I have used a rolling window of the size 30 days. Now as you can see that in case of uh, standard deviation it is quite constant. But in case of mean, the mean has an upward trend. Hence the mean is not constant throughout the time series. Hence the time series may not be stationary. But it is more of a very intuitive method of detecting whether time series is stationary or not. So we will be going by a more mathematical method that is using the A.D. Fuller test. So in my previous video, I have already explained the basics around what is an A.D. Fuller test, the intuitive understanding of an A.D. Fuller test. So right now we will be using the Python implementation of the A.D. Fuller test to check whether time series is stationary or not. And if it is not, st not stationary, what we can do? So the first of all, uh, what we will be doing is that we will be importing the AD Fuller test from statsmodel.tsa.stat tool and then applying this uh, AD Fuller test over the data. Now, uh, this uh, after applying the AD Fuller test, we will be getting multiple outputs. Uh, as you can see, a test statistic, p-value, number of observation used, critical value, critical value, critical at 1%, 5%, 10 So AD Fuller test is basically a null hypothesis test which believes that a uh, unit root exists for the particular time series. So what does this all mean? You can check my previous video on AD Fuller test. Now as you can see here, it as it implements a hypothesis test, so you can see that we have got a test statistic, we have got a p-value and we also got critical values at given significance level. So if the time series is stationary, the test statistic has to be lower than uh, the chosen significance level. So as you can see that the significance value at 1% is minus 3.4, at 5% is minus 2.8, and at 10% is minus 2.56. Right, now the test statistic is minus 1.79. So as you can see that it, this value is greater than all the values present. So uh, this particular time series is not stationary. Now, what are the methods by which we can convert a, sta a time series, uh, a non-stationary time series, into a stationary time series? So there are majorly three methods that we can follow. One is self-lag differencing. So what are lagged versions? Basically, first of all, we need to understand that. So I've covered this uh, in my previous video. You can check that. Uh, though I will give a brief that lagged versions are nothing but a shifted version of the current time series. So for example, what we would be doing that if assume that we have data from 1st of Jan to 30th of Jan. So what we would be doing is in the lagged version we would be so in self lag differencing we would be subtracting the value at on 2nd of jan uh, 2nd jan minus 1st jan 3rd jan minus 2nd jan 4th jan minus 3rd jan uh, likewise and so forth so this is called as uh, self lag differencing by a factor of 1 now if the factor is used as 2 then it would be 3rd jan minus 1st jan 5th jan minus 3rd jan 6th jan minus 4th jan you understand that so whatever is the order may be you are using that particular value from the past and subtracting it from the current value. So if the order is one, you are using the immediate past value. Now, after self-lag differencing, your time series can become stationary. Second method is log self-differencing. So it is nothing but similar to self-differencing, but applying a log function over the whole transformation that we are doing. And the third one and the most useful one is using the stats model.tsa.seasonal library and import seasonal underscore decompose. So seasonal underscore decompose uh, decomposes your time series into three parts, trend, seasonality, and residuals. Residuals. So basically, once you remove trend and seasonality and residu uh, and keeping just residuals, so on applying the AD Fuller test on residuals, more you will be getting a uh, stationary time series. Hence, just using the residuals will help you, and you can move on with your forecast method.